Hello and welcome to another episode of Interactive Biology TV, where we're making biology fun. My name is Leslie Samuel, and in this episode, episode 67, I'm going to be talking about the anatomy and functions of the occipital and temporal lobes. So let's get right into it. The occipital lobe, you can see it here to the posterior end of the brain, and it's here in pink. Now, you just see a small surface here, but I do want to emphasize that it also um, extends medially, so it's more prominent as you go more medially into the brain. And we're going to see that in the next slide. Um, this is the primary visual cortex. So, so when you see something, light is coming into the eyes, it's hitting the rods and the cones in the retina, and there are some signals being sent to the brain. Those signals that are sent to the brain are coming to the visual cortex in the occipital lobe, and then there's processing that's happening there. If you want to review how that happens in the eyes, you can check out episode 34 and 35, where we deal with some of those things in terms of how the rods and the cones process the information, and then how they are sent to the brain. And this is the region in the brain that they're coming so that they can be processed and so that you can see this screen and you can see all of the things that you see. All right, let's um, look at a mid-sagittal section so that we can see the medial aspect of the brain. And you can see here, let's do it in blue, you can see in this area we have the occipital lobe. So you were just seeing the outside surface and it does extend more medially. So you can see that here. Okay, let's move on now to the temporal lobe. And the temporal lobe you can see is over here. It's kind of to the side of the brain. And it's in green. And the temporal lobe is involved in processing auditory signals. Now, we've spoken about how hearing happens. You can look from episode 36 through 40. I cover hearing there. And specifically in episode 40, I spoke about the hair cells and about how when you hear something, there are vibrations that are happening and that causes the hair cells to bend. And when they bend, they send signals to the brain. So this is the region we're talking about in the brain. Now, specifically, there's a region that's not shown, the gyri of Heschel, and that is found in the most superior inner aspect of the temporal lobe. So as we go more medial, you'll see we have some gyri, and we call those gyri of Heschel, and that is where we find the primary auditory receiving area. So this is where the signals are coming from the hair cells so that we can hear stuff. All right, let's go a little further into the temporal lobe. Uh, we're going to look at the three regions. We have the superior temporal gyrus, the middle temporal gyrus, and the inferior temporal gyrus. Okay, so those are the three sections, and you can see they are separated by these two sulci. And when I look at something that's moving, there's some processing that needs to happen for me to understand that that object is moving. And there are regions in the middle and inferior gyri that um, are involved in perceiving moving objects and also recognizing faces. So you're getting now into some more detailed processing so that you can see someone and recognize who they are by looking at their face. Um, you can understand that objects are moving because of the processing that's happening in these areas. Uh, that's pretty much all I want to say about that for now. As usual, you can visit the website at interactive-biology.com, and there you can find more biology videos. You can find transcripts of all the videos, so you can print them out and read them. And you can find all kinds of resources to help make biology fun. This is Leslie Samuel. That's it for now, and I'll see you in the next one.